Shalom, 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 Israel, Royal House of David. All praises to Yahweh Bashem Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Another message of daily edification coming at you today. You know, I got up this morning and uh usually go to my little spot, you know, get my pancakes to my little omelet and everything, just sit down and look out the window. But before I left, I put this shirt on. I ain't wore this shirt in months, man. Months, months, months. And I'm looking at it. I couldn't remember what it said. I said, damn. I said, oh, I'll figure it out later. I'm going to get something to eat. The spirit stopped me, man. He was like, no. Either you look up what it say or take it off and wear another shirt. <laughs> so I was like, damn, it's like that. And I'm telling you, I started to make a move for the door, and it was a heavy feeling, man. Like, Spirit was like, don't do it. Don't you leave that house. So I was like, all right. Went and uh, sat down at the table. Look at the emblems here. See here? And I had to look up the characters, right? And I was like, couldn't figure it out, I had brain fog. So I said, shit, man. So I'm gonna wear my shirt. <laughs> so, most I remind me, he said, what do you tell everybody else? Don't ever step out and you can't represent the kingdom, right? Just don't do it, right? Would have been better for me, I got other shirts, but I didn't want to wear this one. I already had it on, I didn't feel like taking it off, right? So I kept looking, looked up the characters and Got it right. It says, got that fly. It says, Malek Dawid. Now, Malek means king in Hebrew. Dawid means David. So, this way across it means King David when you put it together. You know, you got to read it from right to left, not left to right. So, um, once I got that, feeling went away right that is a trip went to the works up there where I go get my little pancakes and stuff right sat down food came you know ate it up took about maybe 40 45 minutes wasn't in no rush so get up on my seat and um open the door and I'm headed to the car it was an old man I ain't going to, well, I'm an old man now, too. He might look like he may have been about four or five years older than me. He might have been about maybe 60, maybe. Or he might have been my age. I'm not sure. But he said, hey, hey. So I opened the door and got in. Wait, if I started my car up and I rolled my window down, he backs up and stopped right next to me. And he said, hey. He said, what's your shirt say? I said, it says Malek Dawid. I said, that's Hebrew for King David. And he said, you were Israelite, huh? I said, yep. And he went. And he pulled out, just like that. Now, imagine if I wouldn't have figured out what it meant before I left. I would have been caught slipping. Uh, it mean, you know, it mean peace and blessings, you know. Um, now if he would have been a Japhite, I would have told him anything. But this brother, I don't know who he was, but it's like he was testing me. I don't know if he was a Pharisee, I don't know nothing. I just know that he had a, he had a look about him like, Mm, all right. I think he already knew what it meant. I think that he wanted to know. Damn fly. He wanted to know that I know what it means. See? So I'm telling y'all, man, this 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 shit is real. Alright. Um I'm glad that I was on my square and I didn't trip. And I obeyed the spirit.
because if I wouldn't, man, I'd have been embarrassed right now. Like, damn, I fucked up. No, got to always be on point, man. Always on point. So either take the shirt off. If you can't represent, see, a lot of y'all got these shirts and everything, but if you don't know what it mean, it, it, you know, and I tell you what it mean when you get it, but if you don't hold on to that, you know, don't. Don't go out with it, man, because you never know. All right? Israel is on the map, but you got to know, you know, if, if you don't believe in what you're doing and, and, and know what you're talking about, ain't nobody else going to believe you. All right? But the thing is, we ain't doing it for no floor show. We doing it because this is who we are. Right? So learn your shit, man. Like I say. If it's anybody out there that can't get caught slipping, it's me. And that would have happened today had the spirit not warned me and be like, no, sit your ass down and remember what it's safe for you leave the house. Because people watch you. They're watching you. And they're going to come and see what you know. How dumb would I look not even knowing what the shirts say? You know what I mean? So just a test. But all praises to Yahweh by Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, that, um, you know, I didn't get, <laughs> I didn't shoot myself in the damn foot. But anyway, that's how my morning started, y'all. Um, but I want to share something with y'all today, man. Did y'all know that there was a 29th chapter to the book of Acts? Well, see, I'm going to tell you. These heathens, man, they dirty as fuck. And they 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 knew exactly what books to pull out. Now they let Acts go all the way through chapter 28, but there's a last chapter, and I'm gonna read it to y'all. Alright. I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna I'm gonna read the last three verses of chapter 28, which is the last chapter in the 66 books. Okay. This is Acts 28, verse 29. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt the whole, Paul dwelt two whole years in his town, in his own hired house, and received all that came in unto him. Verse 31 and last. Preaching the kingdom of, of power and teaching those things which concern the Lord of Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, with all confidence, no man forbidding him. All right. I'm going to read the New Living Translation of verse 30. For the next two years, Paul lived in Rome at his own expense. He welcomed all who visited him. Verse 31. Boldly proclaiming the kingdom of the power and teaching about the Lord, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, and no one tried to stop him, right? So it said he dwelt in Rome for two years, okay? Now, let me show y'all something. This is where Acts chapter 29 picks up, all right? This is Acts chapter 29. Verse 1. It says, Paul, full of the blessing of Amashiach and overflowing in the spirit, left Rome. What you think of that? So, reading the 28th chapter, you think Paul just stayed in Rome and he didn't go nowhere else. Nah. He left Rome. Well, what did he do when he left Rome? Well, find out. Acts 29, verse 1. Paul, full of the blessing of Amashiach and overflowing in the spirit, left Rome. He was full of the blessing of Amashiach. And he overflowed in the spirit. He couldn't sit still. Having decided to go into Spain because he had wanted to travel there for a long time. And he thought also to go from there 
to Britain. How many of y'all knew Paul went to Britain? I didn't. Verse 2. Because he had heard in Phoenicia that some of the children of Israel around the time of the Assyrian captivity had escaped by sea to the islands far away as proclaimed by the prophet and called by the Romans Britain. So that's Europe. You had to get on the boat. Didn't it say that, that the Northern kingdom had, 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 had went over the waters in the passage, all right, to the lands of far off where they went to Britain and they also went to America. Okay. They also came here. Let's keep reading. Verse 3. Since the Lord commanded the gospel to be preached far and wide to the Gentiles and to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 4. And no man hindered Paul because he testified boldly of Amashiach before the governments and among the people and betook with him certain of the brethren which lived with him at Rome. And they boarded a ship at Ostium, and having fair winds, were brought safely into and safety in the harbor of Spain. And many people gathered from the towns and villages and the hill country, for they had heard of the conversion of the apostles and many miracles he had performed. And Paul preached with might in Spain, and great many people believed and were converted for they knew he was an apostle from the power. So, this is why we know that you so-called Mexicans are of the tribes because Spain is where they speak what? The same as Rome, they speak Latin. That's why they call you Latinos. But when Paul converted them all and let them know who they was, you know, a Spaniard ain't nothing but a white man with a with a damn Latin accent. So they had to fuck it up. Y'all fell under the curses and they changed all of y'all names too. All right? Instead of Ephraim, they call you Puerto Ricans. Instead of Simeon, they call you Dominicans. Instead of uh, 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 Mexicans, they call you, I mean, ex Issachar, they call you Mexicans. And on down the line, right? So let's keep moving. This is why they took it out of here. Because they didn't want us making that link. Dig what I'm saying? Verse 6. And Paul preached with might in Spain. And great many people believed and were converted. For they knew he was an apostle sent from the power. And finding a ship in America. Sailing to Britain. They departed from Spain. Paul and his company passed along the south coast and reached a port called Rafinus. Verse 8. Now, when the word spread wide that the apostle had landed on their coast, large numbers of the inhabitants met him, and they treated Paul courteously, and he entered in at the east gate of their city and was housed in the house of a Hebrew and one of his own nation. Now, this is in Spain, y'all. Okay, verse nine. I mean, it's a lot. Oh, let me let me read that. Let me read that again. This is in Britain, verse seven. And finding a ship in America sailing to Britain, they departed from Spain. Paul and his company passed along the south coast and reached a port called Rafinus. Verse eight. Now, when the word spread wide that the apostle had landed on their coast. Large numbers of the inhabitants met him, and they treated Paul courteously, and he entered in at the east gate of their city and was housed in the house of a Hebrew and one of his own nation. In Great Britain, Paul found Hebrews. Verse 9. And the next day he came and stood upon Mount Lud, now the site of St. Paul's Cathedral. In Britain... And the people amassed at the gate and assembled in their main street. And he preached the Mashiach unto them. And they believed the word and the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Verse 10. 
And at sunset, the Holy Ghost fell upon Paul and he prophesied saying, Behold, listen to this. This is what they really didn't want you to know. Right? Verse 10, Acts 29, verse 10. And at the sunset, the Holy Ghost fell upon Paul and he prophesied. So Paul was getting ready to give them a future prophecy. This has never been mentioned in any of the epistles. And this is why they took the shit out. Peep gang. Paul said in his prophecy, behold, in the last days, the power of peace shall live in the cities and the inhabitants of them shall be counted. You hear that? And in the seventh census of the people, their eyes shall be opened and the glory of their inheritance will shine out before them. Nations shall come up to worship on that mount that testifies of the patience and long suffering of a servant of the Lord. So he said that in the last days, the God of peace shall live in the cities. Okay. He said the father himself is going to live in the cities in the last days. This is what they didn't want. Uh, 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 anybody to find out. But we did. Verse 11. And in the last days, a new announcement of the gospel shall come forth out of Jerusalem, and the hearts of the people shall be filled with joy, and they shall look, and, sp and spring of water shall be opened, and there shall be no more disease. Verse 12. In those days there shall be wars and rumors of wars. Look here. And a king shall rise up and his sword shall be for the healing of the nations and peace he makes shall last and the glory of his kingdom will be a wonder among princes verse 12 I'm gonna read it again and in those days the last days there shall be wars and rumors of wars and the king shall rise up and his sword shall be for the healing of the nations and peace he makes shall last and the glory of his kingdom will be a wonder among princes verse 13 and it came to pass that the certain druids came to paul privately and showed by their rites and ceremonies that they were descendants from the jews which escaped from bondage in the land of egypt and the apostle believed these things and he gave them the kiss of peace and Paul lived in his housing for three months, proving the faith and preaching Hamashiach continually. Verse 15. And after these things, Paul and his brethren left Raphinus and sailed to Atium and Gaul. And Paul preached in the Roman garrisons and among the people, encouraging all men to repent and confess their sins. Verse 17. And there came to him certain of the bell gate to ask him about the new doctrine and of the man Yahweh Shai and Paul opened his heart unto them and told them all things that had happened to him how Mashiach Yahweh Shai came into the world to save sinners and they departed wondering among themselves about the things that they heard verse 18 and after he preached and toiled much Paul and his fellow workers went to Helvetia and came to Mount Pontius Pilate. Listen to this, y'all. Came to Mount Pontius Pilate, where he who condemned the Lord, Yahawashai, threw himself down headlong and so miserably perished. Verse 19. And immediately a torrent gushed from the mountain and washed his body, which had been broken in pieces into the lake. Pontius Pilate, it drove him crazy what he did to Yahweh Shai, and he threw himself off the mountain, right? Look at verse 20. And Paul stretched forth his hands upon the water and prayed unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, give a sign unto all nations that here Pontius Pilate, which condemned your only begotten son, plunged down headlong into the pit 
verse 21. And while Paul was still speaking, they looked and there came a great earthquake and the face of the waters was changed and the lake took the form like unto the son of man hanging in agony upon the cross. Verse 22. And a voice came out of heaven saying, even Pilate has escaped the wrath to come. For he washed his hands before the multitude at the shedding of the Lord Yahweh Shai's blood. Because of this, when Paul and those which saw him saw the earthquake and heard the voice of the angel glorified by the power and their spirits were greatly strengthened and they journeyed and came to Mount Julius where two pillars stood, one on the right hand and one on the left, erected by Caesar Augustus. And Paul was filled with the Holy Ghost and stood up between the two pillars saying, men and brethren, these stones which you see this day shall testify of my journey here. And truly I say they shall remain until the outpouring of the spirit upon not all nations and the way will not be hindered throughout all generations. Verse 26. And they went forth and came to Elysium, intending to go by Macedonia into Asia. And great was, grace was found in all the churches, and they prospered and had peace. All right? So, y'all know Pontius Pilate is a heathen. He's a Roman. Right? Mosai said he's forgiven. One white man. One. Didn't I tell y'all a while back that Donald Trump was Pontius Pilate in the reincarnation? I told y'all. Now, I'm not finna go into detail again. Y'all already know the story. Y'all know what he means to us and what he did on the behalf of Israel and why he's gonna get rewarded. He washed his hands of Yahweh's side blood. He didn't want to do it. He was forced to do it, and the guilt killed him. The Most High took the condemnation off of him. See? So, all that meat was left out. That's what they did. They took it out of the Bible so that we wouldn't read it and put two and two together. See? But Paul said it twice. He never testified of this in any of the other epistles, just this one. And this is why they took it out. See, Paul knew that Israel needed a king. Paul knew that a king had to be erected for Israel to be uh, uh, on the map in the last days. Because Paul knew that after the time of repentance was the time of judgment. And during the time of judgment, what does the scripture say? Well, let's go to Isaiah. Thirty-two. Verse one. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment. So Paul knew that. Pursuant to Isaiah chapter 32, verse 1. So Paul even knew that after he was done and after the time of the apostles, all right, after the time of the apostles and the disciples, that the time of judgment was coming. That's why I said during that time, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. Well, we're in wars and rumors of wars right now. This is the time of judgment. And this is what anybody that goes against this doctrine they're just not going to get it. It's not meant for them to get. All right. So now that we're in the time of judgment, okay, there has to be a king here. All right. Now, I'll show y'all something. Scripture says, let me see, Isaiah. See, let me find it. Um, let's 
which is a uh, Isaiah 1, verse 9. You know what, verse 8, I'll start at verse 8. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. <clears throat> All right? So, we're in that besieged city now. Y'all know that? We're that cottage in the besieged city. Look at us. We a mess. Got EBT. No jobs. People getting thrown out of their homes. We, they, they having their way with us. Okay? We're that besieged city. Now, look what it says in verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been at Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. See? He didn't say a small remnant. He said a very small remnant. Y'all know how small we are? do another video to break it down but <laughs> when I do man when I do we are so small he said many are called few are chosen y'all chew on that till I get back Giving all praises to Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Another video on the way. KD out. Shalom.